Uh, so today is our eighth in our uh, Lunch and Learns. We have Kansas PTAC, Scott Knapp, uh, who is going to be talking with us. He's with the Kansas PTAC and the Lead Center at Wichita, but uh, he will be bringing good information that will apply to everyone. So uh, fear not, if you're not in Kansas, you can hurry up and get here, or he will give you hints as to how PTAC can help you where you're at. So uh, it's all it will apply to everyone. Just a reminder that uh, we have uh, next week is the conference. Uh, for those of you that are participating, um, obviously you know that, we will cover very pertinent information on the uh, conference and information for you for pitches and things like that. So please hang in here after Scott finishes. Uh, we also have, Mindy, could you mute everybody till we're ready? There we go. Just make sure we got that. Uh, we'll unmute as we need them. Um, and then I'll try to remember to mute myself. So uh, getting back to this. So to, uh, next week we are, uh, we have the conference. So there will be no lunch and learn. The lunch and learn is all week long with the conference. So if you're like, well, I didn't plan for that, but I'd like to participate. You're more than welcome to. Uh, we let us know. Uh, Mindy, I guess we could pop up at the end. It's not, I don't think it's in, maybe it is, maybe it's in my slide presentation, I'm not sure. But we can certainly give you the uh, way to do become a general audience member and register and participate. There will be plenty of educational uh, programs, several uh, keynote speakers uh, that we have during the week, roundtable discussions. So if you're not, if you haven't planned on participating, for $99, I highly recommend it, uh, networking and all. It will be very much worth it. So that's next week. The September 25th, we will continue our Lunch and Learns. Uh, this one is the Circle the Wagons. It will be kind of a an extension of the 2 o'clock Thursday roundtable that I'll be leading on now that the conference is ending, what's next. So we have plenty to do beyond the conference, so we hope you uh, – Tune in next week and as we continue to move forward. I think with that in mind, we are, yeah, we are good to go. I am going to uh, invite, uh, and if you look on the, I, I, I interrupt myself for a second. We also have on our panel this week, we have uh, Michael Warren. He has agreed to give us two different demonstrations of product. Uh, I have one of those. He's going to do the live demonstration for you. Uh, so we're going to do two different examples and we'll let you vote and decide which one you think should be the DOD uh, private uh, demo. How's that? With that in mind, I am going to invite Scott to step up and Scott, I will be switching the screens, hopefully. Okay, Mindy, if you can unmute. Oh, no, he's unmuted. I think Good. I've got it done. Good, cool. All right. So, uh, yeah, I'm from the Kansas PTAC. I'm the deputy director of our statewide program. Uh, so if you want to just go to the next slide. Uh, we talk about being here to assist businesses in the state of Kansas and, uh, and then market expansion uh, procurement opportunities. I'm going to give you what we do, but several of this, I know several of you on this call are from different states. You might be from South Dakota where you're going to, you would be talking to uh, Kareem, my good friend up there. And, and, you know, she's probably kind of sad right now because unfortunately she's also a, a Nebraska Cornhusker fan and we're not watching football right now. So uh, also in North Dakota, Dave Klimke and, and uh, Kathy are some good friends of ours that uh, we work with a lot. If you're down in Oklahoma, Carter. And I'm going to give you the access to our national organization's website, uh, give you the URL so you can get in there to see who your local PTAC might be. So go ahead and, and forward it, Alan. Thank you. So just so you know what PTACs are, we were uh, created back in fiscal year 1985 by Congress to assist businesses in understanding the procurement arena. And we're funded by Defense Logistics Agency 
and locally by Wichita State, Pittsburgh State, Johnson County Community College, and go to Topeka. And every one of the other states, uh, they have some kind of local uh, organizations, some of them universities, uh, community colleges, or economic development groups. Go ahead and advance that if you would. So here's where our offices are. We're at the lead centers at Wichita State. That's where I'm an employee. Uh, Terry Bennett is our, uh, wouldn't you know it, as soon as you start, your phone starts ringing, get too many phones in here. Um, lead center at Wichita State and uh, Terry Bennett is our program director. I'm the deputy director. We have another counselor, Judy Bell there, and then our client services coordinator, Beth Euler. We have a Kansas City office, Johnson County Community College, and the person you may be dealing with uh, that Alan's been dealing with, Jessica Johnson, was our PTAC person there. Now she's working for the SBDC, and so we'll be uh, filling that position. And then we have uh, a program at Topeka, Go Topeka at the chamber and Christy Dunn will actually be hosting a round table at next week's Encountering Innovation. So we're going to go ahead and advance that. So this is our national organization. So if you're not located in Kansas, you're represented uh, in your state by, by a PTAC someplace. Some states like Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota are, are uh, statewide PTACs, Wyoming, a lot of them are statewide, and then some of them are uh, geographical areas. So if you're in Texas, you have several PTACs, and so if you go to this, you can figure out which one it is, and, uh, and we know most of the people involved, but that's the URL to find that out, so you can follow up with your PTAC person to get the services we're going to talk about today, and we all offer very similar services and uh, and the, the basic service there's no cost for. There may be conferences that they charge for, or maybe bid matches, uh, but the basic information is, uh, is free to you because you've paid for it with your tax dollars at the federal and state local areas. Go ahead and advance that, Alan. So, uh, we, uh, we're involved in helping companies begin to do business with the government. And one of the places that you need to begin, and I'm gonna talk more about that because it is very important if you're in the SBIR, STTR realm, and or the Encountering Innovation upcoming, that you have a registration in SAM, the System for Award Management. That is the database for government contracting. You can't get a government contract unless you are in the SAM system. You have to, at this point, get a DUNS number and we'll talk more about how that's all going together. Um, also, we work with the SBA's uh, DSBS, Dynamic Small Business Search, which allows small businesses to put in information about their business so that uh, government contracting people and prime contractors can know what it is you do. So go ahead and advance that. And I've got my headset on because uh, you may hear in the background, <laughs> I've got twin grandsons, 14 months old, and grandma's babysitting them. And we also have a dog that's out there. So at various times, you may hear some noise from outside my office. Uh, we are obviously still uh, in, our, in our bunkers uh, working from home to, uh, to work with our clients. But we do one-on-one -on -one counseling, putting together marketing plans. So as you're moving forward, uh, your SBIR, your uh, uh, items that you work with, with the Tech Scouts next week at Encountering Innovation. Uh, as you work with all of that and you're looking at selling to the government, you need to have a plan for how to do that. Uh, procurement history is one of the ways we do that. You go out and search and see who it is that's been buying whatever it is you're selling. Now, I realize if you're an encountering innovation, you're an SBIR, you are bringing new innovation to the forefront, but there's still been somebody buying something that's associated with that new information. And so uh, 
we also work with assisting with the socioeconomic applications. There are certifications for com upcoming for uh, women-owned small business. That's just changing uh, beginning October 15th. Uh, women-owned small business, service-disabled veteran-owned small business, which has to go through a verification process. Hub zone historically underutilized business zones within uh, areas of a community or a county. And then also uh, 8A small disadvantaged businesses. Both those are, are, uh, have to do with certifications from SBA. Go ahead and advance that. Then we also identify current bidding opportunities for you, help you with bid and quote proposal preparation. Uh, look at the, the opportunity you have there. Uh, I, just yesterday, I had a company that sent me their uh, solicitation, said, what is it I need to provide? I just need to double check that. So I went through the solicitation, provide them a, a list of what it was that they need to provide for that uh, bid opportunity. Uh, unfortunately, she sent it to me yesterday afternoon. It was this morning. I would have liked to have had a little more time than, than a few hours yesterday to have that done, but uh, we were able to get that done and uh, get that information out. And then on the back side, you're putting together a proposal. We may not have the expertise to know if your information is you know, you have scientific information. I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to understand all that, but I'm going to understand what forms you need to have and if you're putting things together and what, what seems to be a logical uh, way to do that. So go ahead, uh, Alan, if you would. And then representations and certifications, you've got to tell them about your business. If you uh, sell things that come from child and indentured uh, areas of the country of, of various countries uh, all kinds of things that are coming up for questions there's about 34 questions in the uh, SAM registration and uh, regulations and far far as the federal acquisition regulations and once you start doing government contracting you come under the regulations they are written to tell the government what they have to do to do business with you. Uh, 2,000 pages of six point type, so nice, nice uh, tight, nighttime reading. And then, you know, looking again at the forms and, and even preparing you for oral presentations if that's necessary. So, Alan, if you'd advance that too. So this is kind of just kind of a rundown. I'm not going to go through every one of those, but of what our services are. And again, those type of services are available, whether you're at, in Kansas or you're in Oklahoma or Texas or, or North Dakota or South Dakota. So go ahead and next slide. Okay, so if you're one of the companies that is, is uh, working on an SBIR or an STTR, uh, make sure that you are are looking down the road to get registered in the SAM system. Don't, you know, I've had this happen to me. The lady called up, they had been working on their SBIR for you know, several months. It was due on a Friday afternoon. She called about noon on Friday to get the SAM registration done. This is not an instantaneous registration system. You have to obtain a DUNS number. That may take a week or two. You ha then once we get it in the system, uh, it goes through what's called an IRS validation. They look, you put in information about uh, your tax ID number, your address, and then it goes out, checks to see that you are who you say you are because they'll be reporting uh, if you have contract awards. Uh, to the government, from the government, with both ways there. Uh, so, so they go to look at that. That can take two or three days. Then it goes to what's called the CAGE code, which is a code that's assigned to your facility. And that can take uh, two to three weeks, depending on the time of year. So you start adding that all up. You need to be out there four to six weeks before your proposal is due. And we'll talk uh, in the next slide or two about what is involved with that. So if you want to go ahead and move forward, 
So prior to starting that SAM registration, you need to obtain a DUNS number. That's number from Dun and Bradstreet. You do not have to pay for it, and you can get it free by submitting information on this web form. And if you don't catch it there, you can you can even Google a free DUNS number and, and get that information. Now, later on this year, so if, if you're looking at an SBIR and you're not gonna need the registration in the next couple of months, down the road, supposedly by December, we're gonna be going to a new system called Unique Entity Identifier, which will no longer be using the DUNS number and will be all tied into the, the SAM system. And I have no idea what the time frame is going to be on that because we have not seen how it's going to roll out. But uh, make sure that you get in here and get that information done. And if we go to the next slide, we'll talk a little more about uh, what you have to be. So you don't have to be an LLC or corporation to get it done or to do a SAM registration. You can be a sole proprietor. So if you've come up with a great idea, but you don't know if you want to want to go to an LLC or a corporation, you can still start out as a sole proprietor. Now, an LLC or corporation, because they are registered with the Secretary of State, they don't have to provide quite as much in information, but they do operate under the employer identification number, EIN, from Internal Revenue. Uh, so you need to make sure if you are setting up an LLC or a corp, that you get that EIN number that you'll need. Now, a sole proprietorship will usually operate under a social security number of the owner. And uh, just a, a cautionary bit of information there, if you go to Dun and Bradstreet and you go to register there and you are expecting that you can give your business a name, so uh, you're gonna have Joe's Shoe Repair uh, and your name is Joe Smith, this DUNS number is going to be under the name of Joe Smith. It will not go under uh, to uh, the social, or excuse me, under the name there uh, of your business because it's a sole proprietor and that's the way it will show up in SAM. Uh, so next slide. So uh, Scott, before you move on, a yep. question with this that probably ought to be answered uh, if you know it. Will the SAM registrations automatically update to the new SBCI uh, uh, identifier? Uh, present ones, yes. Well, you're t I, I think I'm answering this correctly. So if you have a current DUNS number, it is when you update, they're going to have you uh, resubmit some of the address information and that goes out to the new uh, the new provider who's going to do the checking on the company um, and so it just automatically will roll over you won't have to do anything besides putting information in at the update it will it will do the rollover we haven't seen any happen as of yet but that's that's the theory of what's going to happen <laughs> as best gotcha. we can tell you yeah We've seen a lot of these. I've been doing this uh, 16 and a half years, so I've been through. Uh, in fact, I was just helping somebody that had an old CCR registration, which was the forebearer of the SAM registration. We've gone through that and, uh, and then gone from uh, the opportunities at FBO to Beta SAM. And at some point down the road, we're going to get rid of Beta SAM, and everything's going to be under SAM.gov. So, um, Thanks. So as a new DUNS applicant, and especially in the, in the sole proprietorship, DUNS may be asking you for things like the lease, a utility bill, some other document. So you can be operating out of your house. They will just need to know that and the utility bill or something can help them understand. They just need to know where you're physically located. So go ahead with that to the next slide. Um, in the, in the SAM registration, once you have that DUNS number, uh, some of the things you're gonna have to provide is a bank account information. So again, if you're a beginning SBIR company and you haven't set up a business account, you don't have a business bank account, you can still operate. The, they just need a bank account. 
So it doesn't have to be a business account. It can be your personal account. It could be a savings account for, for that matter, because it's just someplace where they can uh, put your payment once you're successful in an SBIR or a contract. Uh, they want to know information again on the name and address exactly as it appears on your tax information. If you have on your tax form, it says street and you put in the ST on this, it will kick it out. Uh, they'll be asking for points of contact so that the government can make contact with whoever at your organization is going to be in charge of accounts receivable and, and, uh, a variety of things. And then we have the variety of questions that I talked about earlier. It's going to ask you a couple of times in there if uh, anybody in your business has uh, has been charged with anything of uh, felony lately. Have you paid all your taxes? Uh, do you operate satellite services? Uh, just a whole variety of, of questions and some are are asked more than once, I guess, to make sure you're gonna give them the same, the same information a couple of times. So uh, go on to the next slide there. Um, you know, beyond the registration, we work with government contracts on a daily basis. So if you need assistance in understanding what's in a contract, what's in a solicitation, what you have to provide for a proposal, that's something that those of us in the PTAC organizations across the country do on a regular basis. We're so crazy, we do this every day. <laughs> and, and so we can assist you in reading through that information and help you understand what it is that you're gonna need to provide to the government on whatever it is you're working on, whether it's a RFP, RFQ, source, uh, sources sought where they're doing market research, any of those things uh, would be things that are within what we work with on a daily basis. So next slide, please. So I was on a couple weeks ago to kind of get an idea how this went and there was a SBIR contractor who was talking about uh, he needed to make contact with some people inside the Air Force to get an MOU for phase two uh, he had to luck out. He went to a, an energy conference and was able to make some uh, contacts in that area. One thing you might want to keep in mind if, if you are needing that kind of information, usually those of us at PTAC have some of that uh, information available. A lot of us work back and forth with the small business specialist at the various facilities. And in fact, SBIR comes out of the small business offices. Uh, so if, if it's the Air Force, it's the small business office where that originates usually. So, but maybe it's, uh, maybe we would find that uh, the energy people are located in Colorado Springs or someplace. We can help you find a, a uh, small business specialist at that facility that we would then help have information for you on making contact with them. And they in turn can help you get in to talk to the program people. So major facilities have usually people on, on site. So uh, as an example at McConnell Air Force Base, Dennis Fry is their small business specialist. And a small business specialist at a facility like that, their whole job is to try to bring in small businesses to do business with that agency because the agencies all have goals on doing business with small business. 23% of the government spend is supposed to be to small business and then the socioeconomic areas get three to five percent of that 23%. So those small business specialists are continually trying to get people into those areas. So your PTAC will have, a lot of times we work back and forth with the small business office to put on programs. Uh, at Kansas PTAC, we just worked with uh, one program for Fort Leavenworth, Fort Riley, and then uh, uh, also uh, over at Fort Leonard Wood, put it all together and, and that actually came out of uh, the uh, 
national offices at Fort Belvoir for a small business, but people at the various facilities were involved in that. So, uh, you know, if you're needing some assistance in that area, call on your PTAC to help you. Next slide. And uh, again, it's just a follow up to, to uh, what I was just talking about. So we can go beyond that one. Uh, commercialization, and, and I'm sure that uh, Alan's had several people talking about commercialization being a big part of the SBIR, STTR proposal. Um, again, we may be able to help you look at some historical information so you can find who's been uh, buying similar things to what it is you're proposing so you can begin to, to work on how that uh, commercialization might work and who you might need to talk to to get involved in, the, in that commercialization. So uh, you can visit with us about some of that historical searching. Go ahead. So if you want to get down, started down the path to us, uh, we have to have you register at kansasptac.org. Register there to be a client. There's no charge for that. Then you're assigned to one of our counselors to help you out similar type program at, at all of the rest of the PTACs because uh, the Defense Logistics Agency requires us to have some kind of a, a registration form so they know that you have actually asked for our services. So I think there might be one more slide, Alan. That's just got our, our Kansas PTAC locations. Okay, uh, if there's some questions, I would sure answer those. So while we're waiting, I'm going to ask one. So Scott, uh, if someone gets in touch with you ahead of time, so where they're ready, uh, is there any problem with them connecting with you early going, you know, I'm going to the Encountering Innovation Conference or I'm going to another conference and I'd like to have you to where if I need a letter of intent or if I need something, uh, is that a problem for you? Uh, no. Um we and and one of the things I would say is at PTAC I've had people ask uh, uh, if we can provide them with with some kind of a letter of recommendation and we can't do that because that's we're not allowed to do those kind of things uh, but you no know, there's no problem with in fact we'd be happy to work with them in advance of going to uh, to the programs like you're having this this week and in fact if they're not even involved at this point but they're looking at doing it next year uh you know about six months out is not too soon to start working with us uh i don't think i heard you say it here but i've heard it before uh it will will you work with someone and do you have a preference if they're looking to do their sam registration you you walk through a lot of the steps today if someone wants to do it would you prefer they go ahead and try to do that on their own or how would you prefer to see that i had a a sba person one day say tell them to do that go ahead and get it done and then come to me i said no no uh come to us first, we'll help you through the process. You know, I have a template that we send out to help you gather the information so you have it all together. Uh, it take, it, it's, it's easier for me to help you up front than to try to figure out what happened on the backside. Uh, so yeah, we would, we, we work with the systems all the time. Uh, you know, we've been working with Sam since the day it, it uh, started and stopped, uh, but, uh, so yeah, be in contact with us up front. We'll we'll help you through the process. Um, we do it uh, we do it regularly. There's some questions in there. It's kind of, you know it's kind of like your driver's license test where the questions seem to be the opposite of what the answer seems to be the opposite of what you think it should be. Well, sometimes Sam's the same way. So so uh, I, something else then, how often do, if I go into this, how often do I need to get a SAMS number? The SAM number, actually the number is continuous. You do have to, to go in and update your SAM registration at least once a year. Okay. Now, is that registration something that I can do on my own or is that something that 
that that we need you for or prefer to have you work with us on? On the update, uh, I mean, it's it's a fairly quick and easy. Uh, all your information's in there. You're just going through and making sure that nothing has changed. You know, you're looking at bank account information. Uh, you're updating information because the government looks at at the size of your business based on uh, NAICS codes, North American industry classifications. And if you're in the manufacturing side, uh, it's by a number of employees. If you're in anything else, it's by the, the uh, gross revenue of the business, the entire business. And so you have to update that on a, should update that on a yearly basis also. So your information's all there. You're just doing an update. We can help with it, uh, or you can do it on your own. At, you know, once we get you in the system, uh, you have a lot of the, uh, the information is is there. It takes a, takes me about 15, 20 minutes to help somebody through that. The initial application will take, uh, if I help you th with it, uh, probably an hour uh, to get through that. And you know, we work with people all over Kansas every day, uh, you know, just like you guys do. We work with go to meeting all the time. And so, uh, so that's what uh, we work remotely and we work phone and, and everything else that, so we can help you. And we do, do enough of these. We pretty much have it memorized what's there. So uh, when do I need, or will I ever need to get a new SAMS number? You, unless you change uh, the setup of your business. So if you started your, your you started an SBIR and you were a sole proprietor and you were successful in it and you decided you wanted to do an LLC or a corporation, then you will have to get a, a new, you know, at this point it'd be a new DUNS number. Uh, down the road it'll be a unique identifier. And uh, it it will probably give you a new uh, a new cage code as we go through the system. Um, I'm not sure how the new system's gonna gonna attack that, um, but you will have a new Duns number for sure. So so basically, if I change the legal structure of the business, or if I start a new business, I got a new innovation, and we want to start a new business. Do I need to get a new number? You will, yes, if you start a new business, you'll, you'll get a new number. If you change the, the structure of your business, you'll get a new number. Okay, great. Uh, do we have any other questions from anyone? I don't see any just yet, just double checking. Anyone on the panel have questions? All right. Well, Scott, I, I it sounds like having you around uh, and or your other counselors in the other states makes a lot of sense because uh, whatever I'm uh, what I had, a, I learned something today. Wasn't planning on it. I thought I'd heard it all from you. But whenever you talked about the letter of intent or the memorandum of understanding, those are becoming more and more important. And I had no idea that we could go through you to the small business uh, person. Uh, so that's a, that's a big deal. I think that would make a, that should give everyone, that one little clue should be enough to get everyone to want to connect with you guys. That's a good All one. Right. Cool. Thank you. I, I Thank appreciate you. that uh, big lunch you sent me today. You bet. I hope it wasn't too much. <laughs> Did you get that too, Michael? <laughs> no, you're All right, on thanks. mute. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm going to switch back over while we uh, see if I, there we go. So uh, just a, uh, we've got Michael Warren on today because we really wanted you to, uh, we wanted to talk to everyone about what we're doing with our, Encountering Innovation. So those of you that are still on, if you're planning on being in the Encountering Innovation next week as a pitch or poster, uh, poster board only, uh, everyone has a poster board. Uh, so if you're planning on doing one of the two, then we definitely would like you to hang on for a few minutes because we want to try to get some information out to everyone. Uh, the point that we want to remind you of that basically by today, you should be done with all of your uh, documents. Um, 
the reason we needed you registered, as most of you know by now, is that you're putting your information in your booth. This encountering innovation is a pitch or a tech transfer conversation. Uh, I've got, hold on, Scott, don't leave just yet. I've got something popping up. Uh, it's testimonial. Gary from South Dakota. PTAC handles all my clients, Sam's issues. Couldn't do it without Kareem. So uh, there you go, Scott. There's some kudos. And so an another good testimonial. If you're not using PTAC in your work, you're trying to work with the federal government uh, or even local government, uh, please reach out to them. Scott, I don't know if you said this a while ago, but one of the things that some I get people that will ask me, you, you can't help them. Uh, you can. Are, is there a little bit of a splitting hairs or where do you guys go with what you can help with in a bid and what you can't help with? Are you still there? Yeah. Yeah, I'm back. So uh, I, I know you can't help me uh, from a pricing point of view, correct? Right. That's right. We don't, we don't work with the, the pricing side. Uh, most of the time we're going to send those people to, uh, to you guys at the KSBDC to, to take a look at their pricing. So no, we don't. Okay. But on the bid, uh, are you able to help, help us uh, understand the bid? What, sure. what can we actually ask you? So, so we'd be happy to go. I just did. In fact, I just did a, a program yesterday on how to read a solicitation and respond to, to uh, with a proposal for that solicitation. And so we do that all the time. We look, you know, you have a solicitation that we, can look at for you to help you understand what it is you need to respond with, uh, whether that's uh, technical information or past performance, how the government's gonna want you to respond to that uh, solicitation. And so uh, we would sure go through that, help you break down a, a solicitation so you know what it is you need to respond with. And then on the backside, we can take a look to see that you've put it all together uh, and got all the forms uh, handled and you've checked the boxes that might need to be checked. Great. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. So we're uh, on the encountering innovation then we need you to be completely done with your documentation. And the main reason is because if you've registered and the registration lockouts tomorrow, uh, if you're, if you're not, uh, paid and registered and in the system, then you're going to get locked out. So we need you to get get all that taken care of. I think we're one or two people uh, shy of having everyone uh, taken care of. So just reminding you that. Uh, if you have any questions, please get with your tech coach uh, or ask us today as we go through a couple of the checklists. Um, so with that in mind, the main thing we want you to understand if you're pitching is that you basically are going to be spending 30 minutes uh, total in some kind of a presentation. 20 minutes are in your pitch with the DOD, five minutes is in your demonstration, and five minutes, uh, and th that's demonstration with DOD, and then five minutes in a public demo. Uh, for us, we're stepping up uh, with the demo because it was requested or encouraged or challenged that we needed to do that last year. I do not know of any conference that is do that of similar towers. I don't know if anyone's doing a demo besides us. So you guys, the good news is you're out there on uh, on uh, virgin soil, if you will, when it comes to this uh, demonstration. That means then that. Uh, our tech scouts are going to be impressed that you're doing something that they haven't seen you do before. Uh, so there's a little bit of grace there. Uh, we ask for, for grace with us as you understand and as you try your demo. Don't get so caught up that this is everything. This is an introduction and a collaborative conversation, a collaborative meeting with your DOD. So I've had people our first year that after they got through, they were so disappointed that they had dropped the ball and they had said the wrong thing. And I said, this is the beginning. This is not the end. This is just the beginning. So relax a little. When I checked my blood pressure earlier, I was like, I hope that's wrong. Uh, so for you, uh, we just, just relax a little, take a deep breath and realize this is a collaborative conversation 
and your pitch. Your pitch is nine minutes of you presenting the, the best you can about your innovation benefits and the benefit of working with your organization. There's going At some point, they're going to start asking questions. And when they do, that's the beginning of the collaboration. Now, you still may have some information to divulge, but the idea is that you want the tech scouts asking you questions. That should not shake you up. If you get a question in the first minute, just be happy that they're, that they're already asking questions. These are human beings that are all sitting at their house. They've been there. Uh, if you're pitching at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, they've been sitting there since about 8 o'clock that morning. So please do not forget the fact that these are human beings and they're just like you. They, they've got the same kind of challenges. Uh, Scott talked about his kids, uh, grandkids or a dog. Uh, there's things like that that are going on. So understand the focus of what you're doing. That's, that's, that's natural. Okay. So that's what, that's what's going on. That's where we're at. But we have more than twice as many tech scouts signed up for this event than we've had for any of our uh, encountering innovation so far. So uh, we are getting your schedule and the bluffs and the notes sent out to the tech scouts this weekend to all of them, encouraging, the, encouraging them to look at the schedule and the bluffs that they are the most interested in. So we've already sent your public bluff out, getting them to try to look. And by that, we got new tech scouts that signed up. So we're doing everything we can to get them to be interested in your bluff. Those that came for you, they're there for you. Okay. So that's what your pitch is about. Your demo, you've already pitched. You've already had your collaborative conversation. Now your demonstration is just a demonstration. So what I'd like to do right quick is I've asked uh, Michael Warren. He, uh, he actually, uh, was with us in our beta demo testing. There was three, I think three that did this with just a few of us early, uh, was it early last week? And we learned a lot from that. So what we'd like to do, he sent me another uh, of his pitches, or excuse me, one of his demos. So I've asked him to, to come in today and to join us and to give us one of his uh, demonstrations for you to give you the idea of what the demonstration could look like. Michael, you're on mute. Uh, Mindy, can you unmute Michael? Yeah, just a second. There we go. Oops. One more time. I think it double. There we go. There we go. Okay, Michael. Thank you. Okay. All set? We're ready. So act like we're the DOD tech scouts or the public, whichever way you want to look at it. And you've just walked in. Welcome. Uh, you're uh, ready to do your demo. Okay. Welcome. My name is Mike Warren. I'm an inventor. I'm an intuitive fabricator. And I specialize in user interface. Um, I'm also a part partner with uh, Apollo 13 Designs LLC, and we manufacture a computer interface device, and I can show you here, it's in the charger right now, it's a civilian version, and it's a highly technical device. What it allows us to do is we have a, a ring, which so you can see it here, has a, a, a round metal disc on it. We call that a locator. Uh, there we go. Okay. So, and around that disc, there are numerous capacitive discharge plates. And those plates, what they do is through a series of taps and swipes, you can communicate remotely with your uh, cell or um, SATCOM device. Um, within that ring, it, again, it's highly technical. It is a six layer PCB. Um, there's curved batteries involved. We make it in assorted different sizes. It has a, a, what would commonly be considered a fitness app with a three axis accelerometer, has a gyroscope. Um, there is a complimentary earbud that goes with it. In, in the earbud, we have a oximeter, an NTC thermistor. The oximeter tells blood temperature. The NTC thermistor allows us to register um, blood oxygen levels. 
we can derive a, a respiratory cadence um, and through LED technology, with, which is actually photoplethysmograph uh, or PPG, we, we derive your heart rate. From your heart rate, we can get your variable heart rate and we can determine, we can kind of extrapolate an EKG. Um, so, so how many have you been timing this? How many minutes have you been talking? Minute and a half. Okay. All right. So let's pause you for a second. Now uh, we've got, it uh, looks like we've got 20 attendees. So now you've seen that and I've paused him. I want to uh, offer up. So I got a screen share. Let me get, uh, let me get his, there it is. Bring that over. Do you see it? I see it. Is that better or did it make it the same? Is it a little fuzzy? It looks a little fuzzy to me. Let me see. Okay, see if you guys can hear this. I'm not getting any. Uh, yeah, I'm not either. Okay, so can you tell us what you're saying? Yeah. Can I just, yeah. I'll, I'm just going to, why don't you just talk for yourself? Yeah, no problem. No problem. Well, well, what I did there was I was, you know, simulating a warrior that um, perhaps, you know, there, there's overhead um, uh, adversary he has to deal with. So he gets off the road and he jumps down into a position of cover, in this case, a culvert. One end out to the river, which is, you know, always your first choice, right, to escape. But um, that's not viable right now. To the front, um, now there I'm throwing out a, a SATCOM device, and I'll get to that. So, so why did you throw the device out? Because um, inside that position of cover, I have no uh, connectivity. I have no cell service, and I, and I can't reach... Uh, out to a satellite with my SATCOM device. So my choices then are either to go out into open fire um, and uh, with my SATCOM and manipulate it, or I can throw it out or uh, outside into a position of connectivity, which is what I did there. Now I'm able to manipulate that SATCOM device with my OCS or you know my, my um, ring device in order to call for extraction or uh, to reunite with my unit you know, whatever it is I'm, I'm trying to accomplish, but maintaining a position of cover so that I'm myself am not out in the line of fire. Okay, so, uh, I, so for those of you that are on, uh, see we're seeing where he's at, he's, he's pitched his device out. This is another demo. So which of the two demos uh, would you think you would prefer to see or to, to listen to? Uh, one where it talks about the number. How, how many layers did you say? A uh, six-layer PCB. And and then what about the? Uh, you t said something about being able to check. What, what was it? You can check oh, with it. There's um, you know, the the, the one device is a photoplethysmograph or a PPG, and and that's kind of an LED sensor that we register heart rate with it, and then derive a bunch of stuff from that. Um, okay. So yeah, it, it just makes everybody glaze over. Exactly. So uh, I can remember whenever I first went to uh, go look at a high definition TV and the guy wanted to know if I wanted, uh, uh, I forgot what he wanted. It was so many lines of this and he, or, or that, and he started using all these, all these terms I didn't know anything about. And I thought, I just want a really cool looking, a really clear television set. You know, uh, so to your point there, I I had asked Michael. Uh, I'm, we're really not going to take a, a vote here, but I had asked Michael to speak up and to use to to give us a a very technical tech centric uh, discussion of what his product is versus actually demonstrating it. And in his demonstration to us, he talked about what's I, for some reason, if I don't write the guy's name down, I know who he is, I remember what he looks like, but for some reason I can't remember his name. 
Uh, who was the guy you were using as your example that, oh, that yeah, actually got killed? Um, yeah, Congressional Medal of Honor winner, um, Michael Patrick Murphy. And that's, that's a pretty famous uh, uh, event that happened in 2005 in Afghanistan. And uh, Michael and his unit were pinned down. Um, they, they had a position of cover, but unfortunately, as you can't get overhead with satellite, uh, uh, a SATCOM device, uh, Michael had to bravely go out and put himself into the line of fire, took mortal wounds at that point, was able to get out to his superiors and, and um, uh, request what, what he needed at that time was extraction. And, um, but unfortunately he died in the process. And so what we're really trying to focus on here is what are we bringing to the warrior? What are we bringing to the warfighter? And this is the focus of our, our device here is really to save the life of the warfighter, if at all possible. Cool. So I, to you that are demonstrating, what we want to encourage you to understand is your five minutes of demo are, is really just trying to help the uh, help the tech scouts that you've that you've talked to earlier to actually understand the usage the benefit of this device so seeing it having you turn it on uh in the case of this video he's actually communicating and talking he sent another video uh and for some reason i couldn't get it to i uh, had it to work and then it didn't but he was actually using the ring and he was he was communicating the letters and so to me, that kind of information, understanding what it looks like, what it sounds like, what it's like to be on your finger is huge because inside your mind, you have clues about your innovation. Your tech scouts, if they've not seen it at all, they're clueless. And for them, they're going, for, they're going off of something that you said that makes them think what it is. Good or bad, they could be very close to what you're talking about or completely missing the mark. And having a demonstration, I think that's what David Shahady was trying to tell us, was that by demoing your product or your innovation, you're going to step this up to another level. So understand that in your demo, we don't really want to know how passionate you are, how long you've been doing this. Those are things that can be talked to later uh, over in networking or someplace else. In the demo, get to the demo. Let us understand and see this thing as it is, what it's doing, and uh, maybe the three different ways you could use it that you can see. Uh, that's what this is about. Anyway, so I wanted everyone to understand what we're talking about on the demo versus the pitch and realizing there's a difference there. So the day you pitch, you will be, you're slotted for 20 minutes. And then that evening, uh, evening starting at three, you will, we will all go to the, uh, to the main stage. And from the main stage, you will leave one at a time and go over to the pitch room again. Uh, where the tech scouts have remained. You'll go into the pitch room one at a time. You will demo. You'll be in there for five minutes. And as soon as your five minutes is up, you will be kicked out. You will be bumped back out of the room. So you could be in mid-sentence. Don't be offended. Just understand there's a hard break at five minutes. You'll be bumped out. Uh, the next person will come in. They'll do their demo for five minutes and then back out. That's your that's your time with your tech scouts. Then you're going to be in the main stage, and in the main stage, you'll all be together just like we are here today. The difference is uh, we will be all, uh, if I turned off, uh, finish sharing my screen for a second, let's see if I can do this. Uh, stop share. There we go. All right. So if you look on uh, on your well, with us uh, in a webinar, I think this is different. But for, for the five of us, uh, I'm in gallery view, so I see everybody small, the same size. If I hit speaker view, then I see the person who's talking and it blows it up. For you in the main stage, whenever you're in there, your, uh, your moderator will remind you to click to speaker view, to where as speaker view, whoever's speaking gets, gets blown up. We want you to be able to do that. So where whenever you demonstrate your device or your technology uh, for everyone on the main, in, in the main stage, you will blow up on their screen and they'll be able to see more detail uh, or a closer view of what you're doing. So please understand your 
Your public demonstration is your opportunity. It's your five minutes with other innovators, uh, with other, uh, other general audience members, and not necessarily any tech scouts. Your tech scouts will have already seen you in the other room. Okay, yeah, and what uh, Michael's just showing uh, his. So we want you to understand in your in your public demo the difference. Um, I've got a question. Stan says, is there a problem with the audio of a video? Uh, you talked about for, for you to do an audio, uh, do a video with audio. I don't know. You just saw me having problems. Um, I would say you've got to expect anything with video, uh, with, a, with a file. Uh, that's that is that is something in those five minutes we can't it's kind of like uh, radio air airtime we can't we can't take the five minutes back and reinstall it because uh, we've got so much time and play throughout the entire week what you what we want you to understand more than anything is this is the connecting ing connecting with you and the tech scout we're challenging them to look at all of you and we're and we've got enough that if everyone adopted one or two clients we'd have everybody adopted out so we're challenging them take one or two of these innovators and adopt them uh take them uh, take them as yours through to commercialization that's a big that's a big ask for us but we're asking this is just the beginning of that uh, relationship if you will and so what we want you to understand is no matter what happens in your pitch or your demo it's really about your technology. We want you to be as polished and as focused. Bill is as good as anybody. Uh, Jack, uh, we got several. Laurie, Tom, uh, Bijo, Barbara, they've been through this enough that they give you great advice as to how to pitch and how to work with, with your tech scouts. But the most important thing is that, are you, do you have an innovation? Are you innovative? And is there something about this for the warfighter? And are you paying attention to the warfighter needs? Warfighter needs can be, as you may know by now, huge. It's, uh, we have very few people that present something to us that we cannot see a fit for. Most, almost everyone we can see a fit for. That doesn't mean they're gonna take it, but it is, it is that step. Uh, let's see, we've got, uh, do we have any other questions? There's another one there, Alan. Um, will there be questions in the demo room? Uh, that's, uh, I don't see how we're going to be able to manage that. Um, I've talked to Michael about doing it now in the DOD room. Uh, I think there's, there's capability in the, in the DOD room because they will have been in that pitch room all day long, so they can probably speak up at any moment and ask a question. Uh, so, yes, I think in the DOD room, and I quite honestly would prepare for that. I would try to demo enough in two or three minutes that, that, you, that you get across what, what it is to where then they can say, well, does it bounce? Does it fly? Can you, I mean, they're thinking things. If they don't get to those questions, but they have a, a very pointed interest in your device, if you don't answer those questions, if you're literally in mid-sentence and get cut off and you're out of the room, all is not lost. It's the beginning of interest. So remember that. This is the beginning of connectivity. They may reach, all they got to do is write you down and then tell us or you and reach back out to you during the week or the next week. So it, that's, that's just the beginning. Uh, any other questions? No. Michael, uh, you're you're a client. You're an innovator. So, do you have questions, or what what are you getting? Uh, is there something? Is there an oh wow uh, or learning factor that you're getting from this? Well, honestly, I think the whole thing's an oh wow. I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing how we all came together during COVID to accomplish this. Um, and your team there has been amazing. I've learned a lot. I mean, I I started out. I could barely get a word out with my first practice pitch. And now I can almost get two words out without choking up. So, you know, I've come a long way. That, that's double as good as how I started out. And I think the more of these things that we all do, the more we can actually get our point across and do so in an expeditious manner and in a way that actually in many ways is, is superior to, to everybody being in the same room. 
Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, so to that point, every one of your tech scouts will have a have a, a digital copy of your bluff, your name, uh, your tech coach, and a place for them to type or write. And if they print it off, they can handwrite. And if they don't, then they can type. So we've made it to where everyone's going to have their their copy of what you're doing to where they can uh, where they can enumerate and write down notes to where we can get those back and then get those to you guys. Uh, your scribe will hear live. So as we scribe, do the scribe notes, as soon as you leave, you're going to have a copy of your scribe notes out from the pitch room. So should make it simple for you guys. Um, any other, I uh, see stuff, but I don't know that there's anything else out there. Okay. So, uh, the the next thing I want to help you understand is I I talked to Michael and I talked to a couple other clients and I actually uh, shows you I can get it wrong I had misunderstood the poster board time and so I want you to understand that as of right now every one of you that have paid and registered you have the right and the challenge to go to the portal and put in all the information you want in your, uh, on your, uh, in, in your booth. Uh, you've got a poster board. Your poster board is your public document. Maybe if we continue to do these virtual from now on, we'll call it your public document instead of a poster board. Poster, the idea of the poster board was when we were doing these in person, we had these blown up uh, like a science fair, a three foot tall by four foot wide, and we had it a certain way. OSD was the first one to say thank you that, these, that, the, that the same information is mapped out the same way. No longer do I just look all over and, and trying in a minute or two to figure out what I need to know. I can, I can glance at this very quickly and I can get the information I need to assess whether or not I need to engage this person. Not every tech scout needs to engage you. Uh, that's obvious. But you also told us that you wanted time to meet with, your, with other fellow innovators. So what we've done this year is everyone gets five minutes with your, with your booth it's really your booth time. And what we're doing is in that five, your five minute slot is we want you to be at your booth to where all the other innovators in the entire audience can go by there and, and look at you and look at your booth information at that time. The catch is you could truly go, go out to eat and not even be there at your, at your booth poster board time. If you skip it, and everybody comes by, you'll get a list of everyone in the in the conference that has been at your booth. So you'll already know, and if they don't do anything else, you'll know who showed up. If they engage you, then they'll say, they'll click on connect and they'll say, we need to connect. They may even text you and give you a, a, a message. So you'll know who's interested, even if you're not there. But the idea is if you're there, you guys can text a text back and forth, and then as soon as you know in that five minutes somebody wants to meet with you, then you'll be able to connect with them and go video face-to-face -face with them. So I can text with Michael. I can say, wow, Michael, I, I had no idea it, could, it had that kind of capability. I'm going to be back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chat with you. Well, then I'm going to hit the connect button, connect with him, and we can talk later. So the idea is in that five minutes, what we're trying to do is get our innovators to connect with each other. Okay, uh, so if you understand that way, I see your poster board. I created a poster board. It's in our tech coach booth, and I'll do what I'm going to do is in your booth. You have you have the capability of one video, and for the way I would look at this for me, I would do a maybe a two minute overview of the uh, of the poster board uh, of our device and be able to talk about the company or the, the organization, the innovation and our capable capability of being innovative in that, that two minute period to where every time somebody comes by, they, if they wanna see the video, they can click on it and listen very quickly. If you want an hour long deep dive, I personally would think I'd, I would have that as a follow up because if somebody wants to listen for an hour, 
They're serious. Well, guess what? They're going to get your email and you've got, you're going to talk to them offline beyond the conference. Okay. So what I would see the conference as is, is what I'd call video snapshots, very quick, very short, brief, because just like you, if you go through 51 innovations, how much time are you going to spend per innovation to know which ones you need to connect with? Are you going to allot 10 minutes, 20 minutes at 20 minutes? That's a week. That's what we've got now. If it's, if it's, if it's 30 minutes or an hour, how much time? So think, understand yourself. And if you understand yourself, most likely you'll understand your audience as far as how much time they will give you looking at your booth and looking at your video. And hopefully that gives you the idea of how you should shape the information inside your booth. Um, Alan, we have another question. Um, in the demos and the, let's see, um, questions in the presentation and the demo, demo, will they be typed or will it be talk? Audio. I.e. if you're in um, your pitch presentation or in your demo um, and there are those questions, that conversation back and forth, is it going to be audio like this or is it going to be typing? Yes. No, it'll, it'll be audio. Uh, in the pitch room, it will be, uh, there won't be a panelist. You will be, you'll be all in the same room. So as long as you're speaking, that I'm sure we'll have our tech scouts uh, probably with the with the speaker view where they can see more of you. So you'll have you'll have speaker view. They'll have speaker view capability. And then as soon as you share your screen, they will see your screen, and then they'll see the talking head at the top if you understand that. And so that you're talking, and they see your view. They're going to be able to do just like Vicky did just now because it won't be in a webinar setting. We're in a webinar setting with Zoom right now, which means we can't see you. I keep looking over, you probably don't know why I'm looking over here. I'm looking at the list of attendees as if you're sta standing. That's who we are. You know, we do things as if that's the audience over here. But in the, in the pitch room, everyone will be together and everyone can speak. They can interrupt you, uh, which that's uh, probably a good point. Understand, when there, if you haven't noticed, I would think by now we've all figured it out. But when you speak, there's a little bit of latency between the time you speak and they hear it. it uh, so a little bit of etiquette with your tech scouts. Understand that when they ask a question, they may be asking and you may have started talking. I would try to be really visual about understanding as you're speaking whenever a square, like the Hollywood squares, when that square lights up, stop because they probably didn't understand that you were talking again. Does that make sense? Or they may be trying to interrupt you. So if you see a square light up, pause. If you pause, then you've got a better chance that the latency will uh, factor, you can overcome it, if you will, and you can let your tech scout ask their question. Once they do, then you can re uh, reply back. But uh, there is a latency. We've done some small group stuff where we've been do uh, working and I've had to help others to try to understand there is a little latency there. So try to try to slow, I talk fast and I'm going to try to do all, everything because we're always in a hurry. But when you're pitching or when you're collaborating, you're going to need to pause a little and try to understand that somebody's asking questions. But yes, they should all be live. Your public demo will not, as far as I know, have live conversation because your moderator has been told to to uh, mute everyone except for the person that's speaking. And then they'll say, okay, Michael, you've got your five minutes in your public demo. Will someone unmute and get to be able to ask questions? I would prepare in case they can, but I would plan as if they don't. That's my best answer for you. Did that make sense? Yeah. Vicki? <laughs> you re you represent all the innovators right now. <laughs> you and Michael. Yeah, you and Michael. I'm talking to, I've been talking to Michael the whole time. You didn't know I had w hit one of his devices. <laughs> okay, I'm looking over like the audience is going to say something. Somebody raise their hand. <laughs> uh, I hope that, you know, I hope that helps you understand that on 
Thursday at two o'clock, and then uh, the next Friday, we're going to be doing the circle the wagons. What's going to happen after this? So we're going to be working with you well after the conference. Understand that after the conference is over, your tech scouts have to go back, and they've got to go back to their normal job. And at the same time, they've got to start processing this information and give us stuff to where we know what to say, what to do with you. We have done this long enough that we tried to ask everything of your documents that they ask to where we could just we could just hit a button and give them everything they need immediately. Most likely, they're going to learn something from Michael, and they're gonna and they're gonna see a, a picture in the pitch deck, and they're gonna say would you please make a note under that uh, picture that your device is capable of X, Y, Z. And so you're going to edit most, in most cases, you will edit your information paper uh, and your pitch deck based on the interaction with your, with your uh, scouts. And when that happens, you got to go back and fix it. The sooner you fix that for us, the sooner then we can get that information back to the tech scouts as they've requested. So you need to be prepared for whatever uh, scribe editing conversation you have in the red room to get that done as soon as possible. The sooner you get that done and back to your tech coach and to us, the sooner we can hit the send button and pass that information on to them. I can't tell you how many times we've had clients pitch and then basically just disappear. And that we only need one one thing updated and it's like, we're, we're gone, we're done. And I'm like, no, this was the beginning for us to get that information out. So try to understand you're not crossing the finish line. You're, the finish line is after the conference is over by, the time, by, by getting through that editing phase. Okay, a couple questions, Alan. Um, during the pitches and the demos, will anyone be using the chat function? I do not know if they will. Uh, we will, uh, the best I can tell you is your moderator. We have a moderator in each room. So we will do our best to talk to them and make sure that they know that if somebody's chatting, that we ask that, that the moderator asks that question for you. That's the best I could, I would say. Okay. And then in reference to the, vid to a video, um, does it need to be uploaded or shown live? Um, we don't have your videos. We're not planning on hosting those, correct, Vicky? Right. That's my so, idea. yeah. So you're going to have to have your video uh, ready, like I did a while ago, and you're really going to have to be prepared for the oddity, just like happened before we got on a while ago. I literally had to restart my computer because I could not get my audio to pick up. And it said low system resources. So some of the simplest things to do is get get everything off of your computer, close down every turn off Outlook, get everything off your computer, get your video up and ready, and get your Zoom, get your conference connected, and get everything else off. I'm as bad or worse than anybody. The other day, uh, our state director called me, and we were on Teams. And uh, we had a situation and I had to start closing things and because he was trying to show me something and it took me five minutes to close up stuff. He said, I am surprised your computer even works. So understand that when you're doing this, you need to treat your devices as if they're pristine devices. And this is very important. Get everything off your computer during that period of time. That would be my, uh, I am, I also share my Bluetooth with my phone. I finally have learned when I get on here, my phone may be on, but my Bluetooth is turned off. That way, at least my Bluetooth does not connect and cut out while I'm talking on here. So think of your focus during this period of time. And how did you go about getting the logo, the SBDC Kansas logo on your screen here? Th that, where, wherever it is. There? Uh -huh. Oh, you mean right there? <laughs> well, I just hung it up on the, uh, you know, I had a couple of tacks that I stuck it up with. Actually, I used CorelDRAW um, that, I, that I was able to use with the picture. Was that somebody's question? Yes. 
Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm I've actually moved to Mars. I've been in I've been in a special project. Uh, Brett Sheringhausen would tell you, but then he'd have to do something you don't want to know. Uh, so I've been on Mars for a while. So I just didn't want you to see the eerie those red sunsets. They're pretty weird here. Uh, but uh, yeah, have we covered everything, Mindy? Can you think of anything? Mindy's frozen. Um. <laughs> The only thing I have is just a reminder that if you are going to register for Encountering Innovation, the deadline is tomorrow. So you'll need to do that today and tomorrow. Um, also, we are having an SBIR webinar at 1.30 with Lisa Sanders yes, from US Special Forces Operations. So if you get a chance to join that, I put the link to register in the chat box. In the chat box, great. Okay, One so. Question, Alan. Yes. Um, it says, so to be clear, there was not a place to upload a video in your booth? Yes. There One video. Yeah. And it says, pro I think it literally says promo video URL. And Good I point. Was say, it has to be YouTube, Vimeo, or Wid. I got it. Give me a second. Uh, Wistia, W-I-S-T-I-A. Obviously, Vicki and I use Wistia a lot. <laughs> so yes, it has to, it, you, you do your video just the way you normally do, but you'll have to upload it to YouTube, which is what I've done. YouTube, uh, Vimeo or Vimeo, however you say that, and Wistia. So one of those three would have to be, so it's basically in the cloud. And then what you're doing is it's your promo video URL. It's your cloud URL is what that is to where when they click on it, it just, it's already in the cloud. There's no uploading. So you're really not uploading your, your video except for to one of those three uh, platforms. And that's your, that's a one video, just one, however you want. Like I said a while ago, it can be two minutes, five minutes. It can be your demo. If that's what you want it to be, that's, that's totally your choice. Did that cover the questions? Yes. I uh, I do appreciate Mindy reminding that we are we're going to jump off of this and go straight to the the SBIR with SOCOM. Lori Moncrief is uh, I hope going to join us next week in the uh, us being the the me and I've got a couple other guests that we've got in our roundtable. Uh, that we're going to be talking about what's next. So some really cool stuff that we're going to remind you of uh, beyond the conference. So that'll come up next week. I won't tell you about it now. Uh, so beca because of that, my point is Laurie Moncrief has been doing really good work with us and some of you uh, in helping us understand different programs associated with SBIR and SOCOM. Uh, she's been giving us very good uh, contacts to work with, and Lisa Sanders is one of those that we're going to see in just a few minutes. So if you haven't registered, there's no cost, and uh, we'll see you in a few minutes. I think that's it. Michael, thank you so much uh, today. I wish you and all of your fellow innovators next week uh, good presentations, uh, calm nerves, and great collaboration. Thank you, Alan, and same with um, to you and your team. Thank you for the opportunity. I'll be talking to you soon. Okay. <laughs> you guys take care. Thank you. And don't forget, Minnie's going to send the survey out to you and the PowerPoint. Yes, yeah, those will be sent on Monday. Great, thanks. <laughs>